I'm joined by Conor McKenna at the launch of the AIB 2020 All-Ireland Championships, also at the launch today for Kerry's Sean O'Shea, Mayo's Killian O'Connor and Leash's Ross Munley. Straight to it, Conor. Um, your, your readjustment to, to Ireland from Essendon to English, did, how quickly did you come to the decision or was it something over a process of a year or two, you know, you're coming back and maybe looking at playing matches with English that, you know, did it just slowly dawn on you or did you feel you always would have come back? No, I certainly knew from well, my mindset when I first played it was just a part-time basis and always had the want to come home at some stage, whether it was going to be two years or six years or just play a year. But then come this year, just never really got back in the swing of things, never really enjoyed my time at the club or just playing AFL this year. And then come the last few games, I was even just telling the coaches, I don't want to be up for selection this week, I don't want to play AFL, just happy to go play VFL, the reserves, and play for two hours, boys, really. So... I sort of, I sort of knew the last probably six seven months that it was, it was definitely getting closer to the, to the end of my AFL career. I'm just very happy that I've, I've achieved what I've achieved, and just happy to be home at the minute now. And is it the sport itself, or was it being away from from home? Probably just a mixture. But we're kind of watching show and stuff. Definitely doesn't help. And always, you probably you say you grew up playing, wanted to play Gaelic, not really playing AFL. So it was just a, a sort of challenge to go out there and see if I could do it. And I think it proved to myself that I, I could get up there with the best and that's sort of what I wanted to get to. It was sort of when I got to that and achieved that, for me, I probably had no more goals really left other than sort of win a final or win a, a premiership that from last year just probably wasn't one of that way of resting. So I sort of lost all ambition really to play anymore. And then for me, it was just sort of an easy decision to think move on the next year of my life, which was come back home and get a real job and play a bit of football for sure, hopefully. Yeah. And like your return in the sporting sense probably could be, couldn't be going much better. Three, four and two games. You've had plenty of assists on, on board as well. Are you, I presume you're pretty happy that you've hit the ground running. Yeah, I suppose I was just always sort of thinking something probably in the back of your head, but you've been away for six years, like you've got a moment, it's going to be a different game, are you going to still be able to play it? Or sort of also in the back of your head, but I've been always sort of thinking about it and sort of back myself that I can do it and know I'm capable of it. So something I really look forward to and probably just sort of another challenge now come back and sort of not people that know what to expect and trying to prove people wrong again. So something just really looking forward to. Yeah, and have you actually been enjo- or enjoyed being out there on the field? Like we're looking at it, we're seeing you doing well. Playing AFL this year, just I was never, just never enjoying my, my football and coming off of a game to a team of winning. And I just, I just, I just knew I was sitting in the change room going, I'm in the wrong place. Sort of. So to actually be out there playing a game that you, you want to do everything you can to, to win, put your body on the line, it just, it just makes such a difference. I just, I feel, I feel a lot better about the decision I made just with knowing how, how happy I am. It could be a trick of light, but is that a massive bruise on your right arm there? That is a bruise. <laughs> yep. How did you pick that up? That is from the shoulder and Michael Murphy. Go away. Is it actually? I think, I'm presuming like, but just was a dead arm for a few days and then I went black that day and then I put the jersey on that day and it was a wee bit the variety. How, how, how much did that shudder your bones, that collision? Because it, it was horrible to even watch. <clears throat> it was good. I just 50 50 and. Sort of both took a step back and we're out of the end, so now nah, for a hit and now nah, I sort of enjoy it. Yeah, and, and those games, like, do you feel that there's anything that um, you that took you a while to get used to again since you came back on, on a Gaelic pitch? I think the fitness is a bit different. Uh, AFL's a lot more probably long endurance running, but you get a sort of a break every couple of minutes, whether it's 30 seconds of a stoppage or something, whereas Gaelic just it's non stop. The ball goes over the bar and the keeper has the ball in his hand ready to kick it out again, so it's just, just as a transition of. 30 minutes you're going for flat out and whereas AFL we gotta we gotta break it all and get it come off and interchange. So just probably the constant constant movement you have to keep be, be, be doing the whole, whole game. Mm, and you've been lining out in the forward line. It seems like you've been floating around. How different is it to play in the half back uh, position in the AFL where I presume you're more setting up play? Yeah, for well for me and uh, as a defender in AFL it wasn't really actually to defend, it was more to attack. Okay. So I'm probably more of an attack of mindset than I'm defending mindset. So they would just sort of give me the first few years of just a free role more or less to get the ball and take the game on. So something I really enjoyed doing was getting the ball forward and trying to challenge people and getting past them and hitting kick passes. So it was more for the aspect of the, the going forward rather than actually defending. Okay. And like uh, just looking at some stats that I found online, you seem to do almost twice as many kick passes as hand pass, 905 to 468. Was that considered quite unusual? Did coaches try and get you to hand pass more? Because presumably that's the more percent, uh, the percentage play. Yes, probably some of yeah, did get in a bit of trouble for sometimes. I try to force a lot of the ball and something probably as also a part of my game trying to take risk and just sort of push myself to that 
won't redo mess up and then learn from it. So it's something I always, I always back myself to do and try hit kicks. Probably other people were happy just to put the ball long or hand passes to someone else. So someone would definitely, I would hopefully bring in the gate now trying to hit kick passes and sort of push myself to claim limits and seeing how far I can get with it. Yeah, and when you were trying the, the solos rather than bouncing the ball on the ground, was that something you get in trouble with? So I was sort of always in gate, and even in training, I'd always been trying stuff, different kicks. And for them, it's, it's, it's something I didn't like about AFL because it was something that, when you're younger in AFL, I think you're taught just to do the basics and every has to do the exact same thing, which is something I don't enjoy because in Gaelic it's such an array of skills that anybody can do anything differently. So it's something I probably brought to AFL a bit more than some people and just really enjoy trying to do different things with the ball. I was into the boot solo the ball, as you say, or chipping it up. So definitely something that I would always try. Yeah, and having spoken to another player who went from a professional environment back to GEA, Desi Hutchinson, I'm not sure if you're aware of him, but he was with Brighton playing soccer for a couple of years. Now he's back playing hurling with Bally Gunner and he's in with the Watford panel. He was talking about the difference in the dressing room where he's back home and he feels like, you know, everyone's looking out for each other. But in a professional environment, you know, lads are saying they're your friends, but basically they're looking to take your job. So it's not the same. Like, is that something that tallies with your experience? Yeah, it is a bit different. I suppose you're, you're, you are, for them guys, it's fighting for a career. Uh, they're trying to get your position because they're the one that's trying to get the next contract or it is it's a cultural business like I've seen they don't want you they will get ready as soon as they can like so it was a bit like that you probably have four or five ways really close but then everybody else is sort of as you said just fighting for that, for that position in the pitch and just come back home now to Gaelic and just, it just it's, it's just the difference of playing for passion and rather than suppose playing for money or the professional side of it it's just playing for the love of the sport and the love of playing for people you know and it's just, a, it's just a different thing, yeah. Yeah. One would assume, like, looking at a professional, like a player playing professionally, that you'd have all the great trappings that, you know, I don't know what, whether it's money or women or whatever, that it would all be kind of heading your way naturally as a professional athlete. Is it tough to say goodbye to that? Because I presume you're not 100% sure what you're doing job-wise when you make that decision. Yeah, it wasn't, not really, because I think people think of that, as soon as you think professional football, I think AFL is a bit different than like the likes of soccer or NFL, where they're getting paid fucking some Nazi amount of money. Where we're just getting a, like a, it's a good wage, but it's not life changing, I suppose. And it's, it, there was for me, there was a lot, a lot of a lot more down for my first few years than there was up. So it's it's a lot harder than I think people from back home think. They think a young fella, eighteen, going over there, fashion sport at AFL, and it's just he's living the dream. When really, if you actually look into the reality of it, you're not like you're you living it. You're looking at uh, living a tough lifestyle and. You're moving it across the last of the world with a family or people you don't know and a different culture. And for me, it definitely was a. It was hard my first few years just getting used to it. Really. And did you like the lifestyle out there? Ah, to be fair, I didn't. I a bit of a golf play a bit of golf and I'm not good at it now, but I play a bit and so you've been playing three or four times a week over there. And it, it is to be fair a good lifestyle. It did get a bit lonely sometimes because you have a lot of downtime. You, that's your job. So in the evenings, you, you do have a lot of downtime sometimes. Trying to fill that in can be. Moving away, but for for the year the years it was there definitely no definitely enjoyed myself. Yeah, and and how quickly after you came back did Mickey Hart get onto you about joining the Tyrone panel? Yeah, well, I've been talking to Mickey a bit this year. Just when I came home for the homesickness to start, he was sort of contacted me, and then throughout the year, sort of just keeping more or less updated because I, I sort of said to him that I don't know how long much longer it can last because I just really wasn't enjoying being over there at that time. So it was a, a small bit of communication there when I first came home. He just sort of said, good to be back, and then asked me if I could have come to the this year, and that was me straight back into Really? Just that quickly? Just that. I, I think it was back, I put him back on the Saturday, the Friday night before, and then the Tuesday after the a few weeks' isolation, he sort of said, are you ready to go? And I said, yep, whatever. So he said, come back up tonight, and that was me straight back into it. So. Was there any trepidation? Or I suppose you would have played underage with a number of them. Yeah, yeah. to be fair, it's just, I suppose, club football too, you play against most of them boys as well, and I played with most of them boys at either minor level or under 21 for a year, so... I did know most of the lads to be fair, so it was pretty easy to go straight back in and just sort of general chit chat and back into swing things. Yeah, very good. And when you were given your debut against Donegal, maybe you played a challenge match before that, I'm not sure. Was no, it... no, I think I'm for the seniors now. So was it just excitement? Yeah, just pure excitement. Like I, when we finally got the text, what the team was, and I was seeing it was starting to set off forward, like it was just pure excitement, just couldn't really wait for the game to start and just get stuck in, and then sort of just getting my get away the first game and then just sort of now just keep building that and hopefully just keep getting the swing thing so just yeah pure excitement and I suppose the family all who to see them playing was good for them mm. and was there a, one of the goals that uh, stands out more than the other that you scored since you came back that you enjoyed not really I seem to enjoy most of them the celebrations I don't really realise I do sometimes <laughs> but they uh, no nah, just to actually be back playing a sport that I love to do and just knowing you could you'll do you're willing to do anything for the team it's just to say 
it's just a different feeling I suppose playing AFL when you're probably 100% committed that I'm um, now probably and as far as I was concerned that was an intentional banana kick up to Derek Hannibal for his goal can you confirm? Oh, I can confirm it, yeah, it landed, I kicked it, it landed his chest, so I will take all the credit for that. <laughs> so the, the rivalry between Donegal and Tyrone has been a brilliant one, especially over the past decade. Now you're getting to taste it this weekend, albeit there won't be a crowd there, but this must be, this sort of game is the reason you came back. Yeah, 100%, those leagues, the important one that you stay up and keep competing against any teams you're in the league, but the championships, obviously the main one, going for Stan McGuire, so... It's the one we're all looking forward to. Um, definitely, yeah, just, just get that one out of the way and just get stuck in it. Just, I'm really looking forward to it, and especially now that it's a, a knockout sort of go, so it's, it's going to be a do or die in the day. Yeah, what are you expecting? Physical game? Oh, jeez, I'm definitely expecting a physical game, so it's something looking forward towards. Like, it's it'd be, hopefully it'd be a different game in two weeks' time, and just suppose you ever can deal with that pressure of knowing it's a knockout game, it'll probably come out and tell. Yeah, and I, I suppose because you're only just back, it's, and teams are so tactical now. It's probably there's probably no point in giving you too much information and expect you to get every aspect of the game plan in the space of two weeks. So are you given just a bit of freedom? Yeah, so we're trying to talk to the game plan a bit, but especially the way it is now, there's no meetings running indoors, so it's all sort of outdoors. So it's not really doing a lot of it. We're only training twice a week with Toronto at the minute, and you do maybe a video call once a week. But there's not a whole pile of it, so it's sort of just been way to go out and play with that bit of freedom, and then know the sort of basic structure, but. Just sort of, I love just playing all things things, and so sort of that's just the best way to play, I think. Yeah, and, and just finally, have you had a chance to get a job? I mean, the world has turned upside down at the moment, so it must be very difficult. How are you filling your days? Yeah, it's sort of strange, but just about what going on, trying to get a job, and it's a bit difficult, but yeah, I've sort of the last few weeks just been kicking about most days, to be honest, and then my dad has a, lucky enough has a business here, so I'm sort of giving him, him, him a hand the odd day on a few horses, too, so we're sort of looking after them, but no job at the minute, no. Did you say looking after horses? Yeah, my dad trains a bit of horses, so I used to ride the bike and stuff, so I'm trying to get one, maybe myself here, to start riding it again. Okay. But uh, nothing to win, just you know, clean the night and take them race and stuff. Oh, right, okay. What's, what sort of race, or what, where do they compete? Uh, so one ran up in dock last week, so they're sort of all over Ireland just, so we have, I think we have four or five up there at the minute, or in training at the minute, so just a bit of crack. Mm, and could you end up as a professional horse trainer yet? Oh, jeez, no, the way it goes down for you, it's, it's more of a hobby than... A money maker, I think. Right, okay. And have you had some spills off horses or do you ride them much? I did actually I was home in the during the pandemic I was home from Eston for from Eston for two months and because there's no you couldn't go anywhere, I was riding the horses just for da and then one of them flipped up him and they landed on top of me, so that was sort of the end of that. But <laughs> no, it'd be good to get I'm looking to just get a bit one maybe they can carry a bit more weight because I'm I think a bit too heavy for having three and have at the minute. <laughs> okay, well thanks very much, Connor and McKenna. Really appreciate it and best of luck at the weekend. No, I stayed.